So now we come to the two strategies of Islamic reform. We've already recognized where the impulse for reform comes from, and we've already defined Islamic reform. Now we look at the two strategies, one of which is the re, uh, radical dissociation strategy. But the first strategy we will look at is the relativist reading strategy. Relativist reading, basically it does what it says on the tin. It reads the Quran in a relativist manner. So it says that the Quran was revealed within a particular historical context. And this historical context uh, should be analyzed in order to understand how the laws, and it's always laws by the way, it's not theology, it's not metaphysics, it's always the laws. And it analyzes how these laws should be applied. Um, uh, and you know, the, these laws for today, they are considered to be either unjust or barbaric in some ways. And so there, you know, there, there is a need to reform these laws or to remove them altogether for some, for some reason. So that is a, the, how the relativist reading works. Now, from a theological perspective, I find this problematic. Now, I'm not condemning the method. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, these people are, you know, have evil intentions or nothing like that. I'm simply disagreeing because I find the method extremely uh, problematic. Uh, the reason is, the Quran is a book of self-reference. So it talks about itself. It says, "Hadh al-Quran." This al-Quran. This al-Quran. Al the Quran. It, the the book al-Kitab. So it always refers to itself. And when it refers to itself, we can understand how it applies itself. Um, and I can never see any kind of relativist application with regards to time. Obviously, it's, it's relative to our understanding, yes, but it can never be irrelevant simply because of a time span. I, I don't see that. In fact, if you look at uh, chapter 6, verses 114 to 115, it uh, equivocates uh, the God's role as Hakim, as a, as a, a judge, with the completeness of the book, the elucidated book, uh, Al Kitab Mufassal. This is equated with God's role as a judge, that chapter 6, verse 114. And chapters, uh, the next verse, verse 115, tells us that the word uh, of your Lord is complete in truth and justice. None shall change his words. So, therefore, from here we can see that the laws of the Quran should find its fulfillment in truth and justice. It is not unjust in any way, nor has it ever been unjust. Now, if there is something within us which says it's unjust, and that voice is legitimate, by the way, that voice is not a delusion. If there is something within us which says that it is unjust, then that voice should be listened to and we should reinterpret our understanding. But I don't believe that in any way we can say that, well, this was consigned to the past. This is how it was back then. And I'll give you an example. The, I, I, I will use chapter 4, verse 34, which is uh, the infamous wife-beating verse. Uh, uh, the relativist readers, they tell us, well, during that time, uh, the ancient Arabs were extremely violent uh, to their spouses, their wives. Um, so they used to really, you know, inflict terrible injuries to their wives, etc. Well, this verse came down and this verse gave you a three-step process. Actually, yeah, it is a three-step process. First, you advise her and then you leave the bedroom and then you beat her. And they emphasize that it is uh, beating her, excuse me, beating her lightly or symbolically. There's actually a vast discussion about this because their intuition is also alerted to the fact that there's something wrong with this and i'm talking about conservative traditional scholars they have discussed this inexhaustibly because they themselves feel their ayat fil anfus also has something wrong with this and that's why they don't uh, sit it doesn't sit well with them so i would ask the question can this principle 
of symbolically beating or even lightly beating your spouse, can it ever be correct? What makes us so special today that we don't accept it today, but we can accept it for the people back then? I say, no, this is unacceptable and it was never acceptable. The only thing is it has been misinterpreted. That's what I understand from it. And we should also ask the question, what about other laws? Uh, say, for example, the, uh, the law of wearing hijab. Why didn't they, you know, because they, they were apparently showing their chest area at that point. So why not? Why didn't they just cover half a chest and, you know, or half a head? Or so, you know, some, some form of graduality. There was no graduality for any of these things except for certain laws which are deemed gradual improvements on the status quo at the time. I, I, don't, I don't believe this. I'm not condemning relativist readers. I, I myself followed that school of thought uh, at a certain point, but now I realize that no. In fact, in order to understand the, the Quran in its, in its true original spirit, we need to go even deeper in order to reinterpret and understand it in its um, intended meaning. I'm not saying I own the intended meaning by, by any stretch of the imagination. Instead, what I'm saying is, there is an intended meaning and we need to employ the right strategies in order to discover them. And I will speak about that in the following part.